to stay on track, you must, well, stay on the track, even when you're in a crowd with someone on your bumper. Heck, make that both bumpers and both doors hitting curves right and left, up and down. Ooh, yeah. Keep those eyes on the road and maybe, but only maybe, your tires will stay there too. The racing is so hard fought here at Watkins Glen at both of the road courses on the NASCAR Sprint Cup schedule for that matter. Uh, all take, little give, and we expect more of the same today when the green flag flies in just moments on this 90 lap race. You look at the live scene as the drivers are buckling in, the crews are clearing pit road, and the engines will roar to life just moments from now. It was 1948 when they held a race on the streets of the village of Watkins Glen. A look at some of the scenes from the day, that tradition of racing that dates all the way back to that date continues today with the 30th NASCAR Spring Cup Series event at this famed track. Alan Bestwick with champion driver Dale Jarrett and champion crew chief Andy Petrie. A minute ago, we heard all about staying on the track. It sounds so simple. Why isn't it? Yeah, it sounds simple. There's a lot of asphalt around here to stay on, but it's so difficult for these drivers. They have so many things going on here today. You know, it's not your normal day of just driving into the corner, slowing down, maybe using a little brake. Here, you're on the brakes hard. You've got to downshift a couple of times. You have to upshift. You've got drivers on your bumpers trying to outbreak you into the corner. You're trying to look ahead and outbreak someone else. Just a lot happening. Yeah, they put grass in crazy places, too. <laughs> yeah, and all these passing zones that we're seeing, there are opportunities to try to take advantage of somebody. And they it's a narrow part of the track. It's always where the track is getting narrower. And that's why you see people running into each other. And it takes that give and take. These races get kind of physical. We see tempers boil. More of that today. Yeah, I think definitely going to see it. It's not if we're going to see it. It's when it's going to happen. How late into this race are you going to see these uh, moves start escalating and, and some of the intensity coming up? And there'll be a steady stream of cars on the pit road uh, throughout the race as well. Oh, yeah. You want to be first in, first out of the pits. That's one of the big parts of road course racing is strategy. Yeah, and the driver's just going to have to do their part to stay on track so you can stay on that strategy. So with all the strategy, the hard-fought racing, there's the championship picture as well. Five races till the chase, and what could be a huge win for somebody is out there for the taking. Let's find out who wins starting now. Race fans, it is time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome your Grand Marshal, retired Major League catcher and Golden Glove winner, Kurt Manwaring. Gentlemen, start your engines! Before we bid on, on pit stop, we're leaving. Uh, right there, you know, that sounds good. Kind of a here. And they're wanting to crank them up. This connector right here, Bill. Make sure it's real tight. About to go racing at Watkins Glen today, our ESPN in race reporter. Kansas Clint Boyer, the most recent Sprint Cup Series road course winner, he scored at Sonoma in June. Winning on a road course is a pretty long way from the dirt tracks of the Midwest where Clint began his racing. No racing creates divisions quite like road racing. There's the guys who make it look so easy. The guys who have worked so hard for so long to get so good. And then there's the other guys. One day they might figure it out, or maybe not. In a perfect world, passes on the track would be the only moves that matter. But there's this little issue they call track position. On a road course, it's not just important, it's most important. Those who start out front stay out front. And you know who creates track position? <clears throat> yeah. Hey, hey, guys. Yeah. You. In the pits. You're out. <laughs> it's a big day for the boys on pit road today as the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series goes racing here at Watkins Glen. Field of cars still sitting warming on the pit lane. They'll roll out to begin the parade and pace laps in just a moment. Give us a minute to talk about this pit lane because at Watkins Glen, where, for example, making right turns is different than the normal weekly diet of all left turns, pit road is different 
than normal as well. The cars approach from the crewman's left instead of right. Everything's backwards. Even this pit lane used to be a building right in the middle of it, and since they moved that and expanded the pit road, that little island of stalls down at the turn four end, Andy, has attracted a lot of heavy hitters. Yeah, that's a good place to pit because it's a level spot on pit road. It's right after the entrance. You got a big wide opening to exit out of there. Just one of my favorite spots on pit road. Some big names up there, Vince Welch. As you would expect, there are some key players down here, including current points leader Dale Earnhardt and five-time cup champion Jimmy Johnson. And then also this team, the 18 team of Kyle Busch. Maybe the results for this group is, is crucial for any team in this entire race. Kyle says with five races to go before the chase, they must win a race. Speed, strategy, fuel mileage, they're all critical elements at Watkins Glen. But Kyle sums it up by saying, got to win. We just got to win. Alan? Hi, Vince, and a little further along pit road from where Kyle Busch is pitted is the guy he's probably going to have to outrun if he's going to win today. Yeah, there's some places right here on pit road. It's level. There's no openings here. There's only one opening on pit road, so there won't be any here, but you do have some, some heavy hitters in this section as well, including Marcus Ambrose. Mike, nine car, big favorite today. And I would say Marcus Ambrose has recently asked what it's like driving a Sprint Cup car here at Watkins Glen. His response, it's like riding a bull because the car is constantly trying to throw you out of it. It keeps bucking and throwing you around inside that race car. The key is just managing it. That said, Ambrose has been the master of the rodeo, so to speak. In four Watkins Glen starts, he's never finished worse than third, including a breakthrough victory here one year ago. The question now is, can the man from down under finish on top again, Alan? Starting in fifth position today is Ambrose. In yesterday's NASCAR Nationwide Series race, two of the drivers that fought really hard for the win are pitted kind of close to each other today. Yeah, they're in a, they're in a section, Allen, that's on the other end of pit road going downhill. It's not quite level there. And also, you've got a lot of cars coming in and out of their pit stalls. So this is going to be a treacherous part of pit road. Dave Carl Edwards was yesterday's winner. He was, and it's a good thing that five pit stalls separate Brad Keselowski from Carl White right here because Brad was one of the guys who was a little miffed at Carl's drive to victory lane yesterday. It was an aggressive run to the checkers that uh, ended with Carl Edwards' first signature backflip of the 2012 season. But that was nationwide. He has zero wins in cup. He's got to stick the landing today if he's going to give himself a shot at making the chase. Alan. All right, Dave, thanks. And the turn one end of pit road is where a lot of the heavy hitters, the road course kings, are going to pit today. Yeah, they got this pit stall down at the end. The 42 team did because they sat on the pole. That's the best pit stall here. And if you make a pit stop under caution, this could pay off big. Juan Pablo Montoya is our pole starter today, Doc. And folks, what do you think of when you hear the phrase, do you believe in miracles? Well, of course, 1980 U.S. Olympic men's hockey team that pulled off the unthinkable miracle on ice not far from where we are today over in Lake Placid, New York. But that's also the phrase that Juan Pablo Montoya and this team have been using all day. You see, they believe they can win this race today and get another win the next two, three weeks, maybe at Michigan or Richmond, and suddenly ease their way into the chase via the back door. And Alan Besson, if they do that, that will be a miracle on asphalt worth watching. <laughs> all right, Doc. We'll keep an eye on Juan Pablo Montoya today from that pole starting position in number one pit stall. In race reporter today is Clint Boyer starting in the eighth position. Let's talk to him. Hey, Clint, Dale Jarrett, the ESPN. You with us? Okay, bud. Hey, man, I know you've watched races. You've been a part of them. This turn one that you're heading down towards right now seems to be the big point of the race. When you're on a restart or the start of this race, what's your mindset going down in there? <laughs> I don't know if I can tell you that on TV. <laughs> <laughs> It is the action-packed part of it, isn't it? I mean, I know you'd rather be on the inside, but there is a lot of pushing and shoving down there. I tell you, it's incredible, on, especially on a restart towards the end of the race. It's just truly all hell breaks loose. Everybody, you know, got ground to make up. Uh, everybody's blocking. Uh, everybody's on different tires situation. Uh, it gets down to the end of the race. Turn one is, is, in my opinion, the biggest part of the of the track. Uh, a lot of passing goes on, a lot of blocking, a lot of wheel hopping because you're going downhill. Just got to really be careful and, um, you know, be smart. That's the biggest thing. If you're on the outside of a guy, you know he's going to dive bomb you and he slides in there and takes you out. You can blame him, but you better be looking at yourself as well. Yeah, I hear you. Hey, Clint, our uh, mailbag question comes from Caitlin in Evans, West Virginia. They ask, after your performance at Sonoma, do you feel more confident going into this week's road course race? Yeah, of course. Anytime you know you go to Victory Lane on a track that's similar, 
you know, I definitely have a little bit of confidence in my team, Brad Patty and everybody in the 5 RNG Toyota. Built me a brand, you know, an awesome race car that we won with in Sonoma, and then we brought it back here and uh, had a good qualifying effort. I know the car is capable, we just got to get the driver there. All right, Clint, thanks for talking with us. You have a great day out there. Now, Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Brian Patty. Boys, thank you. Hey Brian, it's Andy in the booth. These uh, these tracks are similar to the one that you won on out in California, and this one they're both road courses. But what, tell us what the big differences are setup wise or car wise between these two race tracks. Well, like I told people earlier in the day, it's like uh, comparing Martinsville and Dover. They're both oval tracks, but they drive and, and setups are totally different. So it's just so much faster here. Uh, speeds are up, uh, brake zones are longer. Uh, Sonoma is much slower and uh, much more about forward bite. So. Uh, Setup here is a lot different than what we had at Sonoma, but uh, you know we'll do our best. And we got really good notes. Uh, been in victory lane here before, so we'll, we'll try to do it again. Well, I hope it all works out for you, and you have the same result as you did out, out in Sonoma. Good luck. Thanks for talking to us, Brian. Thank you, guys. Good boy, our in-race reporter, our over-the-wall reporter today is the Jack Man for Landon Castle, Nick Sutton. Things coming at you from the opposite way today require a lot of focus. Best of luck to you today, Nick. Thank you. Pace laps take a while here at the Glen. We'll come back for the green flag in plenty of time. The Finger Lakes 355 at Watkins Glen about to get underway. We invite you to check out NASCAR.com slash race buddy and watch coverage live from the Glen by following your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. Show you some of the camera views that we've got for you today with our ESPN high definition on boards. Jamie McMurray with our McDonald's on board and a little suspension cam. Got the view of the trailing arm of the rear suspension. You can see some of the drive train. Marcus Ambrose, the Ford EcoBoost on board. Watch the defending winner at work. Tony Stewart, the fresh from Florida Gulf Seafood in the front bumper camera. Think you'll use, use that, that today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clint Boyer, our in-race supporter of the five-hour energy on board. Great view of Kyle Busch at work from our Toyota onboard camera. Jeff Gordon's got the Sprint on board, the four-time Watkins Glen winner. Kevin Harvick, former winner here, going to get to watch him do the dance on the pedals. Yeah, that's my favorite camera shot right there on the road course. That's the Goodyear on board and Juan Pablo Montoya, former winner and the pole sitter today with our Chevy on board. Some great looks for you today for this Watkins Glen race. So it's 90 laps around this 2.45 mile course. Key moment, key place at this racetrack, start and restarts, turn one. They call it the 90, steeply downhill and fast. Yeah, it's fast. You're braking, you're downshifting, and cars all around. Yeah, I'll tell you, this is where you hold your breath. You're on top of the pit box. They go by you to turn one, and you just hold your breath. Your car comes out the other end. Great crowd on hand. 75-degree day. Pace car is off. The NASCAR Spring Cup Series going racing on the road course in Watkins Glen. into that inner loop part. Kyle Busch wasted no time getting himself off to a good start here. And one thing I did see there is a lot of give and take getting into turn one and up into the inner loop. Turn six, one of the few left-handers in a lap, then the hard right-hand turn seven to complete a lap at the Glen. Yeah, see a new patch of uh, concrete there as you enter that turn seven. Most of the drivers say it's not giving them too much trouble now. comes Marcos Ambrose, going to jump out of line, try and get a spot on Ryan Newman, Ambrose in the nine. He makes that look so easy the way he does that, but I'll tell you, it takes a lot of skill and technique. It does, and he passes more cars here than anyone else I've ever seen race it on this road course. It doesn't matter where he starts, he just have, finds a way at these high braking areas in particular, make it look easy and make the pass. Ryan Vickers came down pit road, 
first time by and has gone back into the garage. Follow up on that in a minute. Second, third, and fourth. Montoya, 42. Keslowski, 2. Jimmy Johnson, 48. Yeah, Johnson's looked twice there to the inner loop to the right side of the two-car Brad Keselowski, but I'm not sure he's doing that or just blocking behind him more because he really hasn't been close enough to make a pass. Well, you get a good look at how the start has sorted out and the cars have shuffled in the line. Let's get an update on what's happened to Ryan Vickers, Doc. Well, crew chief Rodney Childers said two words to me. He said, Doc, blew up, blew up. Man. That basically sums it up. Boy, that's a bummer to have an engine problem this early. Night right out. Makes you wonder if there was a missed shift there somewhere, uh, possibly, to, to create something this early. I can tell you that, that this kind of racing is the hardest it can be on equipment. Engines, drivetrains, brakes, every, everything you can think of, it is this kind of racing. It's very hard on equipment. Still watching that fight for a second behind Kyle Busch. And can't stress enough, call this the super speedway of road courses, how fast they're going around here between those barriers and into some of those heavy braking zones. We saw in qualifying yesterday cars at this part of the racetrack breaking for that inner loop 182 miles an hour. Yeah, and you're doing that as you get ready to approach that where you're having to check your mirror and look in front if you're trying to make a pass or just trying to make a block from behind knowing they can come from either side. So that's just what makes this so difficult. You see Dell Jr. take a look there too, trying to get around Michael McDowell. That's for 12th place. McDowell in the 98, Jr. in the 88. And the 78 right there too. Yeah, Michael McDowell with a great qualifying effort there yesterday. Up for the Phil Parsons racing team. McDowell considered an excellent road racer. Here's Regan Smith, New York native, that furniture road car, 78. Followed underneath McDowell by Greg Biffle in the 16. Yeah, I saw Greg Biffle and talked to him a little bit this morning. He was really happy with his car in race runs. He said, I got a little bit loose qualifying, but he felt like that he could work his way to the front here today. Carl Edwards followed him through. Carl Edwards did such a good job yesterday. I mean, just a masterful job of driving to get that win. But I'm not sure he had the best car, but he came back to the start finish line first at the end of it. So while we look at how things have sorted out here, Andy, let's just mention again, in last year's race, there was almost a nonstop parade of cars on pit road for that first green flag stop starting at lap four. Yeah, I mean, this is, sometimes the strategy can get really confusing if you try to keep up with everyone because there's going to be a, a quite a few different ones that maybe are planning on making an extra pit stop. Some are going to try to divide it up evenly, and some that can actually go a lot farther on, on fuel than others. And, and you can tune these things to get better mileage, give up a little power. I've heard as much as 40 horsepower you can give up and gain a lot of fuel mileage. So you just don't know exactly how teams have them teams. You see right there an example, Marcus Ambrose, and because of his reputation, dove down into one Got out of Jimmy Johnson's mirror sight, and Jimmy actually gave him room when Ambrose probably wasn't there. Johnson's going to hold the spot right now. That's a tricky part of the racetrack to try and make a pass in up through the S's, high speed, uphill, narrow. That's just a smart move on Johnson's part because it's still early, and he might end up just giving the spot to Ambrose if he feels like he's going to have to play defense every corner. But when you're so good at that, and that's what your reputation is, you have to respect that, thinking that more than likely that driver, and in this case, Ambrose, has probably stuck his nose in there because he is very capable of making that happen. Up what they call the short shoot, even though it's the middle of the three in length on the racetrack. Still, like you carry a lot of speed there. You downshift into this uh, left-hander turn six, so you're carrying a lot of speed. You have to match the RPMs. You don't want to get wheel hopping into that corner either. Ambrose setting him up for a run down the hill to one. Kyle Busch leading. Juan Pablo Montoya second. Montoya started on pole. Kyle started on the outside of the front row, but on the break on the initial start, running up the hill into the S's. It was Kyle who squeezed by Montoya and cut himself out front. Of the top four qualifiers, which driver do you think will take first within that group? Text FAST to 34763 or go to attfastestdriver.com to play. You could have a chance to win four Gs by playing along in today's AT&T Fastest Driver Challenge. Every week, you'll have the chance to make your pick and see where you stand against the rest. 
on Pablo Montoya standing on the gas, trying to chase down Kyle Busch for the lead. Here's the gap to Brad Keselowski third, Marcus Ambrose fourth, who got by Jimmy Johnson fifth. Checking in on Jeff Gordon, the four-time Watkins Glen winner, Doc. He's running ninth. Yeah, Jeff really wanted to be uh, very careful today. You heard him give me an interview before the race talking about how they are under a lot of pressure. Well, trouble on the track, guys. Like Boris said, is going around. He has done a loop and continued on. That's down in turn one. Or was. And a lot of times when somebody gets off in turn one, it means one of two things. They wheel hopped it into the corner, or somebody tried to make a move to the inside and forced them offline. Looks like it was the ladder, Alan. Got a little hill. 34 car of David Reagan. Pretty good save, though. Got a lot of area over there to save the car. They've done away with all the gravel that they used to have uh, over the years, and now they can just use that asphalt and stay out of trouble, get back out on the track and not bring out a caution. That's what we had there. Okay, we we not so rudely interrupted Doc's report on <laughs> Jeff Gordon. Doc, want to resume that? That was Boris Center did that, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Jeff Gordon has his hands full right now. Why don't we listen in? Loose in. Tight in the middle, loose off. Step one. Terrible off the carousel. I mean, just pathetic. Yeah, we'll see you. And Jeff actually now, now saying in the radio, the car is really, really loose off trying to hang on. Although Jeff Gordon is a four-time winner here, he has not had a top ten finish at Watkins Glen the last five times he's been here. He knows they need a top five today to try to hang on to that wild card spot for the shake. That's the area right there he's talking about that he's terrible. He has turned five. You'll hear it called the carousel a lot. See Tony Stewart there making a pass on his teammate. But uh, that is a, an area, that hard right you're coming out of there, you need to put out a lot of power getting out of there. And if you're not handling there, you're going to get past a lot up to turn six. Yeah, that's a, one place you really got to carry speed. you got to carry a lot of throttle and use that part of the track on the exit uh, to catch the car. You see him go over that curb a lot, carrying a lot of speed. And you got to be good there. So Tony Stewart, uh, with that pass on Ryan Newman, moves up to sixth. Newman back to seventh. Gordon running eighth with Flint Boyer and Mark Truex Jr. right there in that group. Stewart, a five-time winner here, Doc, has moved up a little bit. Yeah, he has moved up, but he's got an issue here. And I want to ask our crew chief upstairs what he thinks. Now, what Tony Stewart just told Steve Addington a moment ago was, hey, Steve, I'm tight to the left. I am loose to the right. You got me? Tight yep. left, loose right. Andy, how do you fix that? Well, if you're tight to the left and loose to the right, and what you want to do is you want to put wedge in it for the right-handers, which is kind of opposite of what you do on, a, on an oval track. And it's going to have the opposite effect. It'll actually it'll, it'll make the car tighter one way and looser the other, which is what you need to do here. So to me, a wedge adjustment in this case would be better than, say, a track bar adjustment or, or maybe even an air pressure adjustment. Isn't it wild watching them use that paved runoff area and hop over that curb off that carousel, even here at turn six? You know, as they put more and more pavement down at this place, these drivers have just <laughs> found ways to use it. All right, here's a look at how they run. 12 laps in. Fourth place, fifth place, sixth place. Tenth place car is the 56 of Truex. Here's the second group, Carl Edwards just moved up to the 11th spot. And here is 20th place. Matt Kenseth at the tail end of that look. Yeah, he saw Paul Evans there and moved up uh, really well so far. He's made a nice uh, run towards and, and making some passes, so look for him to be up in the mix most of the day as this thing tightens up towards the end. Kyle Busch has led the most laps in two of the last four Watkins Glen races. He won one of them. The other one got away. Kyle on the charge early here. Watch this car over some of the bumps as he rockets around this super speedway of road courses. Caution-free so far here at Watkins Glen with Kyle Busch leading all of the laps so far. He's opened up, Vince, a one-and-a-half-second lead on Juan Pablo Montoya. 
He says the car is pretty good, a little tight in some sections and a little free in others. One area of concern for this team, though, today is the braking, especially late in the race when you've really got to have those brakes because twice this weekend they have damaged and broken the fan that cools the left front brake caliber. In fact, they came in this morning just before race time, and as they were going over the car and discovered it had been broken for a second time, so they had to replace it again. Now take a look, the left front of the car, watch, you can see it flex as it goes over those rumble strips, and that's where that uh, fan ends up getting damaged, and cooling those brakes is key for success here at Watkins Glen. Yeah, you know, we talked about how hard the, all the parts of the car get stressed so much here, and every single thing, I mean, just like that right there, going over these curves is so violent, and that's a great camera shot to show that. It happens so quickly, you don't think much of it until you can slow it down and just see just how much that stuff's moving around. What a win would mean today for Kyle Busch. He's had such horrible luck that's dropped him not only out of the top ten in the championship standings, but right now out of a wild card spot. A win gains him points on the other guys he's racing with with a similar number of wins and also bumps him back up over Jeff Gordon in those standings. Jimmy Johnson running in fifth position right now. Doing fine, bud. We're running probably about a half a second to six tenths off the leaders right there, but plenty fast enough to stay in the top ten. You're doing good. Just remember, man, we got to get everything we can. I know you're trying, but in order for this deal to work out, we got to try to be a little faster. Here we go, man. So in order for this deal to work out, it comes back to my interpretation, strategy. When you're going to make your pit stops and where you're going to come back onto the track in relation to other people. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. If maybe he, he might be thinking about a strategy where they make an extra pit stop and they need to run faster. I'm trying to interpret that. But he's still out on the track at 16 laps. I'm not sure exactly what strategy they're dealing with. Speaking of strategy, first move to pit road among the leaders is Ryan Newman's, Doc. Yeah, first volley in the fuel mileage game being fired you know, by Tony Gibson. Now it's going to be a three fuel stop race for these guys. Making it in two would be close, very, very close. Four tires. Remember, Ryan Newman's never won on a road course. 16 wins, but never on a road course. Four tires, no changes. Their next stop window around lap 34 to 37. It's Michael McDowell also on the pit lane making his first stop in the 98 car. All right, Andy, 39 cars made a move. There goes McDowell off the pit lane. Well, everybody's got a, a planned strategy. They're not going to probably react off of somebody else making a pit stop. They know what they can do and what they can't do. If they can split it up and make it on two stops, that's probably what they're going to do. If they don't think they can, or if they think it's an advantage to having fresher tires and making that extra stop, that's what they'll do too. And I, I, kind of what I interpret from that 48 radio is maybe they're going to try to make that extra stop and try to use speed to their advantage and have better tires in the car. Marcus Ambrose was able to make that work for them last year in making those three those three stops. He pitted at laps 17, 38, and 64 last year. Ambrose did on the way to the win. Vince? You guys talking about Jimmy Johnson. I had that very conversation with Jimmy before the race about could they possibly be on a two-stop strategy? And he said, I don't save fuel well enough, and we don't get good enough fuel mileage to make it on two stops. He said, in fact, we made we stopped four times last year. We got a crash in a yellow. 49 car Jason Leffler through one of the few areas on this track where there is a gravel trap. He's gotten through it on the other side and is continuing. That's between turns six and seven. Just stay on the bottom there, pit it. Just come on in. He did a good job right there not to pull out on the track. A lot of times to bring the rocks out. And that will bring out a caution. He just basically lost the brakes, got in there too hot. Made some, something happen. Powered his way through it. Vince, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy says it's loose off turn six and loose off the essence as well. Obviously, you see a four tire change making an air pressure adjustment as well on the 48. So, no co fuel topping it off for the Lowe's 48. Pit road speed limit 40 miles an hour. It is a very long pit road. But a pass-through penalty like Michael McDowell just made because he was tagged for speeding, exiting the pit road on the stop we saw a lap ago is very costly. You want to find something that'll really mess up your strategy, one of those penalties will kill. Side note, only two drivers have recovered to finish in the top 10 after a pit penalty here at Watkins Glen since 2006.
only two top tens after a penalty. It's just such a long pit road. You pay such a huge penalty for, for making that mistake. If you're going to arrow, you have to do it on the side of caution here. You may lose just a little bit. There's fourth place Ambrose and a good gap back to this race for fifth with Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon, the lap car of David Reagan between them. Reagan pitted after the contact he had with Boris said earlier they had some left front fender damage they needed to pull out. Kyle Busch has led all the laps so far. Caution free at Watkins Glen. There are your top five drivers coming up on the one third mark of the race. The Finger Lakes 355 at Watkins Glen. NASCAR.com has all your latest NASCAR information. Beautiful look down on this 2.45 mile road course as the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series races here for the 30th time. Fans, check out NASCAR.com slash race buddy and watch coverage live today from the Glen by following your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. Suspension cam on Jamie McMurray's car. Marcos Ambrose and Bobby Labonte made green flag pit stops during the break. That is Stephen Light in the 33 pulling out the black car while Jeff Gordon rolls down to the attention of his crew, Doc. Yeah, the four-time champion and four-time Watkins Glen winner. You heard him on the radio talking about how loose the car was, particularly from the center of the turn off. They're going to take air out of the tires and go down on the track bar. Outside tires on, come around to the inside. And there is, is the track bar adjustment as they top it off with Sunoco. Mike. Kevin Harvick saying he's tight to the left in the S's. They're going to change the air pressure back to the settings they had in practice. A four-tire change, he's away. 36 car, Dave Blaney is the white car following Kevin Harvick down the pit lane also. Harvick, former winner here. Certainly could use something good to happen because it has been a not as good a performing as we expected stretch for Harvick in that 29. Here's Brad Keselowski. Dave? Brad has said that this car is tight all the way through this uh, course today. It will not turn for him, even though he's been running up in the top five. A good run for him so far. They're going to make a, looks like a wedge adjustment for him, full of Sunoco fuel, slight air pressure adjustment as well. The five of Casey Kane is on pit road as well. Casey's biggest problem is his air conditioning unit began smoking. It was filling his helmet with smoke, so he disconnected it entirely. His car also won't turn, so they'll make a four-tire stop. They'll make a track bar adjustment on the five. That can't be a comfortable feeling. So, no. no, not smoke coming in there. When they just stop working is enough, but then whenever they're putting out some smoke, that's very distracting. Eric Almarola in, Mike. Four tires to make an air pressure adjustment, trying to get him a little bit more grip than he desperately needs. Almarola away. Speeding penalty for Stephen Light. Too fast exiting. Pass through penalty coming for the 33. And still waiting to see most of the front runners make their opening pit stops. Including that man, Kyle Busch, who's led every lap of the race so far. Watch some of the lap times and seeing how much these new tires are worth. Watching Jimmy Johnson's lap times versus Kyle's, he was losing about a half a second a lap to the 18 before he pitted. Now he's gained, he's gaining that much and maybe just a little more, maybe about seven tenths of a lap on the new tire. So going back to that conversation when we had when the 48 made the pit stop about maybe being a three-stop race and some other people trying to two-stop it. A lot of times you're just forced into it. I mean, talk about the 48 team really has not demonstrated the ability to get good mileage, good enough to make it on two stops. So then you're kind of stuck with that, trying to make the most of it. Jamie McMurray, trouble. That is at the inner loop where he is. The damage on the left side of the car. Probably tells me he has some trouble under the S's somewhere. That's where I would guess that that trouble happened. Possibly, I'd blown a tire. We can see the crease in the door where the 
guardrail, or he got up against the guardrail. Jamie was running seventh at the time. That car is destroyed. By two. There's nowhere good for that tire to blow, but that's one of the worst spots. We just wrecked. The in front of the guardrail and the sheet yeah, metal. You can just see, I mean, he just, just cranked that guardrail. He would just have got the fourth gear, so he's getting up to not quite to maximum speed, which you'd get up to over 180 as you enter the interlude, but well over 150 miles an hour there. I'd be kind of concerned as a crew chief to see what caused that, and if it, or the other, especially the teammate like, say, Montoya. I'd like to know what that was. Was it brake heat that maybe charred the D, or, or did he run over something? Yeah, you'd have to think that that's a, a real possibility 25 laps into this race. So McMurray goes to the garage. Caution benefiting Marcos Ambrose and Brad Kozlowski just in front of him, for that matter, because they had pitted under the green. Now guys that haven't stopped yet are going to have to pit, and they've been able to close the gap on those guys here under this caution. Yeah, that does definitely plays to the advantage of the guys that are on the uh, three-stop strategy. They get to make up a lot of the time that they lost by making that. Uh, they get to pull up. I'm not sure that we'll see these leaders even make a pit stop now, but they'll have to make it at some point, and uh, they'll end up losing the lead. But these guys get to make up about two miles of, of track time. That's Kurt Busch in the 51 left rear. Looks like it's coming apart on that car. Left rear tire just blew out. What? Broke right off the car. Left yep. rear tire just fell off. Yeah, that's uh. Looks like the wheel's still intact. Looks like all the lug nuts must have fell off. Well, they had such high hopes. He had made a pit stop earlier. Coming to this race after a great third place run at Sonoma. Well, the um, I take that back. He has not made. Yeah, pit stop. I, I was thinking he hadn't made the pit stop yet, and he's taken that back to the garage. I didn't, I didn't have him down as being on the pit lane. The, the, the season yeah. of frustration for Kurt and this team. Um, you know, they run well, and then things happen. Yeah, this is. I mean, having a wheel come off the car. Uh, that's definitely somebody didn't do something right. Kurt was running 11th at uh, the time of the caution. Bizarre. Yep, see all the wheel spacers flying off of it. Thought coming into this weekend that besides the Talladega race, this, Kurt is such a good road racer, this might be the best chance that team had to try and slide into victory lane. Yeah, a lot of high hopes, and uh, they were really needing that, trying to attract a sponsor for that race team. You know, they've had a lot of good runs, but it's really not a lot to show for that, unfortunately. All right, both, let me give you a rundown. We're going to pit a couple laps earlier than I wanted to, but I think with cautions and our fuel mileage, we'll still make it. A lot of guys have pitted 10 laps ago, so they're obviously going to be in front of you. They're running the same speed as you on stickers as you are on 25 lap old tires. Stay patient. Keep doing what you're doing. You look great out there. Oh, you did a good selling job there. <laughs> I, was, I was checking some of the lap times. I think they were a little <laughs> bit quicker than that, but... Uh, yeah, this is uh, it's one of those things that, as your strategy, you, you wanted to pit a little later and do it under green before the caution came out. Now they're kind of forced into it, uh, making it a little bit early. But they're going to give up a lot of track time to a lot of cars. I think Brad Keselowski is one of those that gets good enough mileage that he is the one that's going to take the most advantage here. I think he still only has to make one more stop. I think there's quite a few other cars that pitted under green that will have to make two more stops. Brad is the highest running car that already made the green flag pit stop. And by the way, you heard Kyle Busch already shutting it off and saving fuel there while we were hearing that radio communication uh, and listening to the onboard camera. I certainly agree with the chief, crew chief on one thing. He's doing a great job of yeah. driving the car. I mean, he jumped out there from the start, got himself in the clean air and making it all work. Pit road open for the lead lap cars. Kyle Busch is going to hit quickly, Vince. Well, they want Kyle to stop short in his box, so he has plenty of room on exit. He actually went a little too deep. No changes to the car, chassis or air pressure, just four fresh Goodyear tires, Mike. 
Clint Boyer saying he's tight in the bus stop, but does not want to be any more free than he already is, and there will be no chassis changes, just four tires and fuel for Boyer. Meanwhile, the 56 is in. He's looking for overall grip. He'll make an air pressure adjustment in four tires for Truex. Jock? Tony Stewart says, I'm really loose to the right-hand turns. Chassis adjustment, four tires for the 14 car. In front of him, Juan Pablo Montoya. Loose in, loose off. Air pressure on a both rear tires. Here comes Montoya leaving him. Montoya will be Kyle Busch. Then Tony Stewart. Then Truex off the pit road. Was that what we were talking about, about that number one pit yes, stall? Yes, sir. It's worth a lot under caution. But he got that pit stall because he earned it. He did earn it. He won the pole position. Gets the lead off the pit road. Now all of these cars are going to be behind the people who pitted under green and stayed on track under this yellow. We'll reset the restart order and watch that crazy charge into turn one. Watkins Glen International just about to the one third mark of today's 90 lap NASCAR Sprint Cup Series go on this fast road course. The fastest stats are brought to you live all race long by the new Sprint Direct Connect, part of the fastest push to talk experience. Upgrade to the new Dunn. Kyle Busch, no surprise, has been the fastest of the pack. He's led all of the laps under green until that caution flag pit stop. And the fastest four-tire pit stop so far has been done by Kevin Harvick's team. With nice work by them, the fastest stats brought to you by the new Sprint Direct Connect. Upgrade to the new Dunn. Find out more at Sprint.com slash speed and get done. Tony Stewart is going to have a big hole to dig out of in this race. Remember we were talking earlier about pit penalties and only two top ten finishes on road courses in a while? Tony just served a pit penalty for this. Yeah, this is going to leave a mark. Yeah, it's just you're, you're trying to get that car full, and that's so important to try to get every ounce of gas in it, so you leave it in just a little longer. But it, the, these cans are really hard to disconnect if they're on an angle. Well, we battled from the back before. We know how to do it, so we've got plenty of time. Well, there's no better driver making passes and getting it done around here. He's won five times, so we'll have to use all those skills to make it happen today. Tony was third just before that pit stop, removing equipment from the pit box. Not allowed. And maybe part of that also is that whole backwards thing, too. It is. Yeah. Uh, Joey Logano has been on pit road forever during this caution, Mike. Well, Alan, you remember at the top of the show how I said Marcos Ambrose equates driving a Sprint Cup car here to riding a bull? Well, uh, Joey Logano is getting a first-hand experience. The car is hopping around so much, they thought they had a broken right rear shock. They came down pit road. They replaced it. Didn't feel like that corrected it. They came back down. Jason Shapiro went under the car to look to see what was wrong. They haven't found out just yet, but obviously they're trying to sort through it, Alan. All right, Mike, thanks. Joey was 16th before the caution. He's going to be all the way back at the end of the lead lap, probably somewhere around 34th in line. So all these cars up the front did not pit under the caution flag. The uh, first off the pit lane, Kyle Busch restarts seventh, and Ryan Newman pitting as the green comes out, reporting a flat tire. So a lot of give and take there down in turn one. Ambrose slipped wide. Jimmy Johnson looked like he was going to make a move on Keselowski. Settled back in even behind Ambrose and Gordon giving Johnson a read. Yeah, I thought uh, Keselowski just did a flawless job on that restart by not overdriving turn one and coming out of there with the lead. Not sure how much give and take we're going to see right here. It's a little takey. It's like Boyer gave it to him. Seeing a lot of dust flying. I say that, uh, I, I, I think I said Kyle Busch was first off the pit lane a minute ago. I meant Montoya, who edged him at that line like we saw. So there's the first car of the caution flag pit stop guys trying to work his way back up through the traffic. Yeah, trying to work, but he got really loose right there. Martin Truex Jr. went around him on the high side. That's a pretty powerful pass there. Yeah, he might lose another spot. Montoya might. Harvick's on the inside. He still have had issues down here before. Just moved by Kyle Busch on the outside in turn two. Not going to get it done, though. Dive, he does. Wow. He makes that work. That is incredible. We saw Carl Edwards do that to take the lead, actually, yesterday and go on to, to win the nationwide race. But that's 
pretty strong in one of these Sprint Cup cars. 180 miles an hour to the heavy braking zone at the inner loop. While we watch this on the track, we saw Kurt Busch go to the garage a minute ago, Dave. Yeah, and disappointed uh, a good road racer like you out way too early. What do you think happened? We're still trying to understand. Uh, the actual shucked out. It's on the track and felt like a broken track bar again, like we had at Sonoma, but it's not. So they're just working hard to find out what it is, and I want to get back on track just to make sure that we diagnose the problem the best we can because these guys work way too hard for these mechanical things to happen, and sometimes these things just add up, and we're just uh, on the wrong side of the eight ball. But just got to thank Finch and Phoenix Racing. The Chevy, we were coming to the front. We were catching those guys to be on that strategy and just to pit twice today, similar to Sonoma, but it didn't turn out. Thanks, Kurt. And Dave, while we were talking to Kurt, Juan Pablo Montoya slowed from sixth position. Something wrong with the pole sitting car, the 42. He's trying to make his way back to the pit lane. There he is. Something broke in the right front. Something broke in the right front. Doc, here he is. Yeah, after the pit stop, Alan, he went out and said the car just got very, very tight, and suddenly, suddenly it wouldn't turn at all. He said something's got to be broken in the right front. They're going to come down and jack it up. Actually, uh, they talked about raising the hood and taking a look. Yeah, Doc, now, I think they're going to find it's the left front. Yeah, because... it is the left front. He said right front that a moment ago, but they're going to look in the left front. And Andy, never a good sign because the driver goes out immediately, he, DJ, and they know he's, when you break something, the thing won't turn when it has to on a road course right there. Yeah, it, what happened, it looks like it may have been a lower control arm that has broken. It's one of the control arms, and like I said, it's just hitting these curbs. Everything about this style of racing is so hard on the car. Right there it is. Something broke. Ball joint Something broke in the right front. Arm. Something broke in the right front. And Doc, hidden from you because it was on the opposite side of the car. When he came to, to a stop in the pit box, that left front tire was just wobbling like that. So yeah, it took the crew a second to try to find it. They were looking on the right front. Yep. That's where he said, but it was actually the left front. And as you were saying, these cars take so much abuse with these drivers running over these curbings and everything that they're doing. But they make these parts so light now to try to you know, get a lot of weight ballast in the cars and everything. So just amazing they hold up as well as they do. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. You're trying to build everything as light as you can for speed, but then you still have to have durability because these, guys, these drivers are going to gonna venture off the racetrack onto these curves. The uh, car count in the garage is growing. Montoya's headed there, Dave, and Logano's there now. Yeah, yeah, we'll get with Juan in just a few minutes, but uh, parts ripped off of Joey Logano's car. Joey, do you know what and where yet? Yeah, well, I felt it about 10 laps before that caution. I felt it start bouncing really hard in the rear. It ended up ripping the whole mount the whole shock mount right out of the uh, chassis. So um, it'll be a little bit. We'll get back out there. They got to weld a new one in there. So uh, it's a bummer. You know, um, I felt like we were a couple adjustments away from where we needed to be, but I felt like we can get it to where we need to be by the end of the race. And um, we'll go out there and try to salvage everything we can get. Um, I mean, in the point position we are right now, it was all about wins going into this race. Now it's even more about wins. So we'll try to salvage what we can with our Home Depot car. and. Um, Go ahead again next week in Michigan. Been a tough weekend for Joey here at the Glen. Trouble yesterday in his nationwide car and now in the orange number 20. All right, Dave, thanks. And Logano talking about it's all about wins because if all the drivers have equal wins, then it's about points. Well, you're losing a lot of points when you're back in the garage on jack stands. Kyle Busch in sixth place. Check that, he moved up to fifth, and he's trying to get fourth from Jeff Gordon. There are the top three. Okay, I had that backwards. <laughs> he's trying to get fifth from Gordon. As Truex got by Gordon also. <laughs> Brad Keselowski leading in the NASCAR Spring Cup Series race at Watkins Glen. It's been kind of eventful here lately. Watkins Glen International live NASCAR Sprint Cup Series on this high speed, hard on equipment road course. There is the race for the lead. Brad Keselowski in the two being dogged by Marcos Ambrose in the nine. Johnson in third, Truex, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, Kevin Harvick, 
Dale Jr. running in eighth. Clint Boyer, our in-race reporter, running ninth, but reporting a problem on that machine. Mike? Yeah, Alan, all was smooth until moments ago when he radioed in saying he's got problems with his brakes. The pedal awfully squishy. Said he went all the way to the floor at one point and had nothing. So very much a concern there for the 15. Yeah, that's a concern. Yeah, because that, that's not going to get better throughout this day. So it may be a situation they may have to come in, get some fluid in this, and, and bleed the brakes, which is going to take a while. Yeah, they may end up having to change calipers. No, we're not even halfway. The boy running just ahead of Jeff Gordon, who's lost a handful of positions in the last few laps. That 24 card, not to his liking. Now hang tough, bud. Oh, we're junk, man. We are absolute junk. Yeah, he lost a lot of spots here in this run. I don't know what's wrong. We heard he was loose earlier. Thought maybe we saw a little fender damage, but uh, he is. I, I'll go with all that. He is kind of junk right now. Yeah, we know some of these other cars that got tires on that last caution have a little fresher tires, but it's not like he had a lot of laps on his. But the back of that group there, you can see Tony Stewart. He's been on the move since the restart. Restarted 25th on lap 30. It's up 12 spots now. Yes, sir. And who said you couldn't pass on a road course? Not Tony, no. Tony and Marcus Ambrose as we go for the lead. What a surprise. Marcus Ambrose is leading at Watkins Glen. Yeah, I'm not a bit surprised he's leading, but I'm not sure that he doesn't have to make two more pit stops. And I'm almost certain that the two car will only have to make one more. So probably a good move by Keselowski just to let him go if he's putting too much pressure on him. While Ambrose is out in front, Juan Pablo Montoya, who started in front, is in the garage, Vince. In fact, problems for both the Ganassi cars, both in the left front portion of the car. How about yours, Juan? Uh, exactly what was the issue with that situation? I think it was the lower control arm. You know, everybody in the story show has been doing an amazing job, you know. Got the last two poles. And, you know, I did think we had a car to win today. We, you know, we, I ride behind Kyle. We kind of bogged down out of the start. and. Carl got us, but I rode behind all the brown, and we got a good pit stop, and got ahead of him, and it was looking really good. Everything like it was going according to plan, and uh, the car started getting really tight, and also when I hit a curb, and the car went completely left on me. So, you try to get back out. I think so. We're trying to fix the score a little bit of points. You know, it's been I think it's like be like my fifth DNF. We don't finish. So it's been a tough year. Alan, it has been a tough year. And Montoya, one of several back in the garage area, as Watkins Glen has taken its early toll. We're just shy of halfway. I just want to mention by way of full disclosure, I know there's only a 30% chance of scattered showers today, but as we look at the radar west of the racetrack, there are a couple of those scattered showers. We'll keep an eye on it and hope it scatters away. Marcus Ambrose leading at Watkins Glen. Just a few laps from halfway of today's NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Finger Lakes 355 at Watkins Glen International. The race being led by the defending winner Marcos Ambrose, who is out in front after passing Brad Keselowski a minute ago. Let's reset where we are with our fresh off the wire served by KFC. Kyle Busch led the opening run of the race after getting the jump on Marcus Ambrose from the initial start. Then Ambrose and Kozlowski had pitted under green. Kyle had not. Caution came out. Kyle pitted under the yellow. That's what's put him back behind them. A number of drivers in the garage with mechanical problems and the championship standings. Dale Earnhardt Jr. running eighth in the race at the moment. Matt Kenseth running 16th, but Jimmy Johnson running third. So as they run, Jimmy would be second in points. During the break, Jeff Gordon with a green flag pit stop. Doc. Yeah, you heard him on the radio say, hey, we are junk, we are junk. And what he was referring to was we're just getting killed up off the corner. So on lap 40, a couple laps ago, Alan Gustafson decided to go ahead and bring him in. Four tires fuel, two rounds down the left rear to try to give him some uh, drive off and grip coming up off the corner. That pit stop now uh, puts him back in 29th position. Now, they were on a three-stop strategy anyways. There wasn't any reason to make that one a long stint if they're having tr trouble with the car. Shorten that one up. Get in the pits, change tires, get back out there, and hopefully you make your car better. And we heard from Kurt Busch a few minutes ago. Just an update. His team has repaired that 51 car, and he's back on track. That's Kurt right there. And he is nine laps down in 33rd place. 
Jason Leffler's been in and out of the garage. In the garage, Juan Pablo Montoya, Michael McDowell, Joey Logano, Josh Wise, J.J. Yaley, Chris Cook, Patrick Long, and Brian Vickers went out with engine failure on the very first lap of the race. Here's a look back through your top ten. Kozlowski second. Johnson third. Kyle's up to fourth. Harvick, Edwards Jr. and Clint Boyer racing there with Tony Stewart for that 10th spot. And we reported on some brake problems a little while ago. Any update, Mike? It seems like the situation has stabilized a little bit. The brakes have not completely gone away yet, but there are signs that they've been fading. Meanwhile, Boyer just trying to keep his head up and Ryan Patty encouraging him. If you can sneak a little rear brake to it to help you out, do what you can. You're doing a really good job. Still clear by seven. Great pace. You and the 20, it's fine, dude. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're clear by 20 out back. Great pace. 12-7, same out front. I just walked up on top of the pit box and spoke with Brian Patty, asking him what he thought the problem was. His opinion is he just got them too hot. They're going to pull some tape from the brake ducting. Next pit stop, Doc. And you saw Tony Stewart make that pass. Tony has now gained three positions in about a lap and a half. Why? Because he heard Alan say a moment ago. And actually, Steve Addington told his driver, said, hey, Tony, we got some rain about 20 minutes out, and I want to hustle a little bit. So now Tony on the move. Now hustling, he has to after a penalty on his pit stop when they carry the fuel can out of the pit box that sent Tony Stewart back to 25th. He's now up to ninth spot. Well, he saddled up and rode that thing to the front, didn't he? Wow. Casey Kane tried to crack the top 10 in the five car. Yeah, most drivers will consider this a little easier track to to drive than the other road course at Sonoma, Casey kind of favors the, the opposite way. And it's, of course, he's won out there, and that makes a big difference in what you do. But uh, I talked to him the other day. He felt like his car was decent. He said, I think we definitely are a top 10 car. If we play the right strategy, get a break, we could get the top five. How about this five car, Dave? He was one of the interesting stories of the morning if you were walking around the garage area. The welder and the grinder on the five car. They found at the rear of the car uh, where the track bar mounts to the truck arm. There were some things they didn't like, some uh, little fractures, and they were reinforcing. Kenny says it's stronger than when we started the weekend, but uh, they want to do some reinforcing for him. It's been running great since that pit stop. They made some adjustments, made it better for Casey. That's one of the weaker links in that suspension is that track bar mounting system. You go back and forth, you work it back and forth, and you go over all these curves, it makes it really bad. Here comes Ambrose, Mike. On lap 20, Todd Parrott called for a track bar adjustment. Marcos Ambrose said it made the car better. They're going to actually make a further track bar adjustment here, trying to improve it yet some more. Four tires on the nine. Vince. Jimmy Johnson tied into two, loose everywhere else. A four tire change, a track bar adjustment. Kevin Harvick saying he's tight in the S's. That's been the case throughout the course of the day. They'll make an air pressure adjustment, taking a little bit of air out of the front tires and a four tire change for Harvick. Brad Kozlowski goes to the lead after Ambrose makes a green flag pit stop here. Yeah, we're going to see the two cars. He's on that two stop strategy, which I, think, I firmly believe he is. He'll have to go about 14 more laps. About 10 laps, actually. He'd probably have to go 10 to 14 more laps before he can make it. Dave Blaney is off the racetrack. They had a rear end housing wobbling around in that car, like maybe they've broken the track bar. Jeff Burton appears to be slow. And there is Kyle Busch running in second. And the gap up to Brad Keselowski, the race leader. Well, strategies being played. Cards are being placed on the table. Those chips are being emptied up, too. What's going to be the winning strategy today at the Glen? Just past halfway at Watkins Glen, so the five-hour uh, energy rapid recap of it is caught up with what's happening so far. Some pit strategy. Marcus Ambrose on the three-stop strategy. Lap first pit it on lap 21, came back down again on lap 47. That is different from what we're seeing in that two car. Yeah, there's a lot of strategy being played right now by many different teams. Nobody's the same that I'm seeing. 
But these guys are gonna have a good clean pit stops. Right now, Marcus Ambrose back in the 16th. Keselowski's up to lead this thing right now and looking good. Yeah, Kyle Busch was just absolutely awesome from the green flag. Led 26 laps, but done a great job. Has worked his way back up after his previous pit stop to second position. Not sure we can say enough about Tony Stewart. Had a removing equipment issue on the team's first pit stop. Got put back to 25th. Stewart right now is in fifth. Yeah, he has flat flying through this field. I mean, he told the team, he said, look, we've been in this position before. He said, we get ourselves back up there. Montoya was the pole sitter, had a broken control arm. Uh, he is out of the race, someone that you definitely look at when we come to these tracks. Got sat on the poles very fast, broke a lower control arm, suspension part. He is out of the race and a uh, disappointing day for Montoya. Been a tough year. And you see Casey Kane right there. He came down pit road on lap 47, too fast entering. That's the fourth pit road penalty of the day for the entire field today. And he, and he got lap, but now he's got himself back in the lead lap. He just passed the leader, Brad Keselowski. A good move for Kane. Got new tires and that thing is powered his way back up through there to keep himself on the lead lap. Tony Stewart, since 2002, five wins and two second place finishes. But what he is doing on the track today, don't tell me you cannot pass on this track. Oh no, don't tell me that at all, especially this guy. I'm not a bet man, but I would never ever bet against Tony Stewart getting that race car back up to the front. I like how he's really rallying this team, saying, hey look, we've been in this position before guys, we made a mistake, I can get him back up there. So he's not giving up the team, he's not mad but he's got this thing up to fifth right now, so he's really rocking and rolling with this car. And how about the driver of the 22, Sam Hornish Jr. finished well in the Nationwide Series race yesterday with a top three finish. Right now, he's in seventh. I'll tell you what, he's really doing a fantastic job driving on these road courses. Roger Penske looks like he's done the right thing by keeping Hornish in this number 22 car. And Sam has never been known for a great to be a great road racer, but he's getting better and better. I really do think, guys, that yesterday's race nationwide has really helped him today. He's doing an outstanding job in this race car. He's put it up front. He's in the seventh position. He looks like he's going forward. He is tracking down Clint Boyer as we speak. Sam Hornish doing an outstanding job. Hornish about 14 seconds behind his teammate, Brad Keselowski, the leader. Dave, what is the strategy of that two car today? And we've been talking about it all day, whether it would be two or three, but Paul Wolf, the crew chief, didn't waver this morning when I asked him. He said, we'll be a two-stop car all the way. The tire holds speed, uh, his ability to save, and our fuel mileage is good enough. I said, what would bring you in for a third? He said, just damage, and we don't expect that. So, expect them to do one more time today, Nicole. Maybe around lap 60 or so. Working lap 53. When will Brad Keselowski next stop? When will Kyle Busch stop? You got to... Comment there? Hey, I got a comment on, on Roger Penske right there. Roger generally on top of the spotter stand watching everything, but right here, he's down with Paul Wolf, and Roger Penske is one of the best strategists. You watch him in the IndyCar racing, he knows yep. what he's doing. You see him right now commenting to Paul Wolf there. They're working on these fuel mileages. Really happy to see Roger down He is there. definitely the master strategist in the IndyCar series. We'll have the final 38 laps from Watkins Glen. Brad Keselowski, the leader, right now. How will that change? We'll find out in just a few. The Fastest Stats are brought to you live all race long by the new Sprint Direct Connect, part of the fastest push-to-talk experience. Upgrade to the new Dunn. Brad Keselowski has turned the fastest lap in this race. And that is a pretty sporty lap time, too. The pole is only a minute and nine seconds. The Fastest Stats brought to you by the new Sprint Direct Connect. Upgrade to the new Dunn. Find out more at Sprint.com speed and get done. Keselowski getting it done by 4.8 seconds over Kyle Busch. With Martin Truex Jr., Carl Edwards, and now Tony Stewart rounding out the top five. Marcos Ambrose is back in 14th. He's made his second pit stop already. Hearing Brad Keselowski in that two, maybe hanging a right turn onto the pit lane right now. No, not this lap. 43, Almarola behind him just came off the pit pit lane from a green flag stop. He's got fresh tires. Tony Stewart. Remember that first pit stop? Didn't go so well. So Doc, they'll be needing to make this one clean and quick. Absolutely. Big Jeff Goose Patterson is the gas man here. And you jerk a gasket out of his hand, you've done something. So we'll watch and see what can happen. Tony's in the car a little bit loose on the right-hand turn. 
They're going to be very close to making it on field. In fact, they may need a half a dozen yellow flag laps to be able to make it from here to check her flag. Inside tires going out. Now Goose got the gas can in. Cassie Augustus just in can is out, and the smoke is gone. All right, Doctor, while we keep an eye on the leader coming up in the opening to pit lane again, we'll tell you that Joey Logano and Juan Pablo Montoya have come back onto the track from the garage area. Jeff Burton has gone to the garage area. And here's your leader, headed for pit road. 40 miles an hour, the pit road speed limit. A penalty now would be devastating. And again, a clean and quick stop. The order of the day for Penske Racing and Brad Kozlowski, Dave. And Alan, he shouldn't need much in the way of adjustments. He's been pretty happy with it. He said it was lacking a little bit of forward bite and a little bit of turn. But he said also that he saved his team three or four laps of fuel while on the track. That helped him back away from the lap 60 pit and pit sooner. Now I think we're going to call it 56 or 57. He'll get a track car adjustment with that. Mike. Pit Boyer on pit road now as the team goes to work on that car. Remember the brake problem they were experiencing. They pull some tape. You can see it right there from the ducting trying to cool it off. Vince? The 88 of Dale Jr. just leaving his pit box after a four-tire change and air pressure adjustment trying to tighten him up. There's Greg Ripple, Doc. Yep, Greg's going to lose both ways. They're going to put the air pressure back where it was. Going to go down on the track for a little bit. Four tires fuel. They might be able to make it to the from here. Down on like flawless pit stop. Oh no, is Truex out of gas? Well, it sure looks like it. That's a, about the worst place you could possibly be out. Caution for oil, possibly from this 11 car. Well, I'm going to not say possibly anymore. Yeah, that's a, that's a blown engine for sure. You can see fire under the hood or under the car. Denny Hamlin's nightmare at Watkins Glen over the last few years continues. Well, he's not had any luck here, has he? I'll tell you, this is a huge break, though, for Brad Keselowski, just making that pit stop before this yellow. I mean, a couple of cars that look to be on the two-stop strategy, Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards, still out there, though. Yeah, that's just, this has actually probably cost Kyle a lot because he'll have to make a pit stop here and try to Gamble on being able to make these last 31 laps, I guess, after he makes his pit stop. He's going to lose a ton of track position. Now, Truex out of gas, so the caution. But pit road is closed here, and he's in, so he's going to have to start at the back of the line. And yeah, he didn't have any choice. That would have been. Had to come in. He was going to be way back anyway by the time that they stayed green and he'd be back there, so probably going to be no worse off than what he would have been. Kind of the end of a frustrating weekend for Denny Hamlin. Things didn't get started off good. Yeah, he got caught up in a wreck in practice when another car blew an engine. This is a backup car. This looks similar to another one we've seen this year from this car. Another engine failure. Sixth straight finish outside of the top 30 on a road course for Denny Hamlin. That'll and make you not like it. His third straight here at Watkins Glen. Uh, it's not that he can't drive him when they're blowing up. It's not much you no, can do right. Right. Yeah. for a battle. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're contributing to the problem. I doubt that's the case. So all the guys who hadn't pitted yet under the yellow flag, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, are under the green flag. Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, Sam Hornish, uh, Menard, and Kenseth. I have those five as not having stopped yet under the green. Then Marco Sambros is up to sixth before the yellow flag waved. And he's going to be the race leader after things cycle out. He will have to make another pit stop, though. He's on that three pit stop strategy. So from sixth, do you make that pit stop here? If he can make it, uh, the, the reason they're on that strategy is because they probably can't get the mileage. And that would sure be a huge break for Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards. If that's the case, then they all get on this same kind of same lap strategy here, even though they'd only be two versus three stops. Well, we'll find out right now. Ambrose is coming in with these other leaders. Vince, 
Well, Kyle Busch was just getting ready to come in when that yellow came. No changes on the car, just four tires and fuel. They're hoping that that yellow didn't cost them. Mike? There was some concern in the 22 camp that they might not have enough fuel to even make it down pit road. They were that close. They'll gas it up. They'll make a chassis adjustment because it's been tight, especially in the carousel and a four-tire change for Hornish. Game. Carl Edwards was worried about the very same thing, whether or not he'd have fire in the hole. Right now, he does. The car is working. Wedge adjustment tight in the right-handers right now. Duck. Jeff Gordon just apologized to the crew, guys. He said, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm doing the best I can. We just don't have any grip. Allen said, we got to fix it. So they decided to come in, and uh, they're going to add a spring rubber in the rear, top it off with fuel, Sunoco fuel, four tires. they got to help him get some grip getting up off the corner. He's away. You're going to see Carl Edwards. Well, he won't even show up on this because no. he's not in the top ten still. He was in there forever. He had some trouble getting fire up in that car because he might have been out of fuel coasting to the pit lane. Caution out just the second time. Under caution at Watkins Glen, remind you that some more great road course racing for the NASCAR Nationwide Series next Saturday from Montreal. It's been a wild race in the entirety of its history to Easter next Saturday on ESPN. And next Sunday, back to the high speed super speedway action at Michigan. In the Pure Michigan 400, newly paved track, little 28 car tire test, got some problems from June sorted out, and we're looking for a great race starting next Sunday at noon Eastern time here on ESPN. Cleaning up some oil from Denny Hamlin's engine failure that put us under this caution. In the Finger Lakes 355 at Watkins Glen, and a reminder to check out NASCAR.com slash race buddy to watch coverage live from the Glen. Follow your favorite drivers for free with eight live camera views. So who was helped by the caution? Who was hurt by the caution? What's the big picture for the restart? And how wild will the turn one restart get? The answers to these and other questions. <laughs> when we come back to Watkins Glen, they're still clean it up. We'll take a break. Oh, the NASCAR just called one to go, and there's the signal out there in the inner loop. So let's do a wave off on that commercial break and get ready for the restart. Yeah, wave off and wave arounds here. Cars taking advantage here. All right, so look at them as they come by here. Brad Keselowski, Tony Stewart. Uh, Truex is going to have to pull over and go to the back because he pitted too soon. Then you're going to have Boyer and Earnhardt Jr. as uh, cars who did not pit under this yellow who stopped under the green. Then you're going to have Kyle Busch right up there along with Kenseth and Ambrose and some of these other guys who pitted under the yellow flag. Advantage disadvantage. Dave, how about the uh, leader's crew chief? And the leader told me this morning, we we're talking about that tire holding speed. You've got a couple less, you've got a couple less laps on your tires than the other guys. Can Brad hold them off? Yeah, I think so. We've had a good Miller Lite dodge all day. It's just, uh, like I told you earlier, we just got to play our strategy, uh, run our window, and uh, we've been able to do that. And, you know, we've had a little luck on our side with the cautions falling to help us out. So, uh, I think everybody's good from here, so hopefully we can keep this thing up front and uh, find ourselves in victory lane. He told Brad as much. Every, everyone has pitted for the last time, so go race it out, Doc. And Tony Stewart's crew chief, Steve Eddington, had four calculators going a moment ago when I went up to talk to him. I said, who has the best calculator? He said, hopefully he's the guy in the car, Tony Stewart. He knows we need about three more laps of yellow to make it, but uh, he's really good at saving fuel, which is what he's doing right now. Just add Greg Bipple to the list of guys who pitted under the yellow. Kyle Busch is going to be sixth on the restart. Yeah, and I'm watching this uh, 15 car, Clint Boyer. He's had brake issues. What's going to happen on this restart as they go down into turn one? Whoa, Tony Stewart. Marcus Ambrose in that nine car knows that right now he's got to make up as much as he can. These fresh tires on this restart get as many cars as he can to get himself back in position to win. Tony Stewart with a bold move by Clint Boyer there getting into the inner loop. A bold move hopping that curve coming off turn one where he had to wrestle a car off the side of Boyer too. There's two cars in the top 10, and we didn't think we were going to be that good today. It's the 88 car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the 17 of Matt Kenseth. They're both up there in the top 10, battling it out. 
There's Ambrose on Kenseth, 9 and 17. That's for seventh place. That's already two spots that Ambrose has made up in this first lap of green flag racing. Let's go back to Earnhardt Kenseth. Between the two of those, they've only got two top 10 finishes the last 15 road course races. Jimmy Johnson trying to take a spot from Sam Hornish. Uh-oh. Uh, see what was on that camera lens? Yeah. Oh, trouble back up there. It's all far spinning in turn one. That's Casey Kane. Come on, keep going, keep going. Still inside of here. Come on. You're all good, all good. So he's got that pit road speeding penalty. He's kind of gone downhill, which we see many times. Here comes Kyle Busch trying to make a move on Greg Pitt. Nothing there. Again, a mention, a 30% chance of a scattered shower. The forecast for the period of the race today, but there are some showers on the radar. We just keep hoping they scatter elsewhere. Marcus Ambrose after another spot. Yeah, another one of those just perfect moves that only he and a couple others can make as they go into that turn six. Just uh, You don't even see it. looks like they're making a huge effort of outbreaking them, but they make it look so smooth and make the pass. What happened to Casey Kane last time? Uh, looked like maybe a little assist there from Martin Truex Jr. Who had to go back to 22nd on the restart after pitting too soon. But he ran 50, out of fuel. Get down, get down, get down, get down, get down. Okay, you're clear. And now Kane is on the pit lane under the green flag while we follow the leaders around the course. Kyle Busch keeps peeking out from behind Greg Biffle. And this time he gets him. Biffle's going to have his mirror full of another one that can make that move here in just a second as Ambrose approaches. Caution out, Jason Leffler. And that's got a stream of liquid behind it. Leading back up the straightaway. Hey, he's pulled off right there at that interloop area out of the racing groove. Yellow flag number three. Who was it that just said we haven't seen the last of the yellows yet? I think it was Rusty. Was that Rusty during yeah. the commercial break talking among ourselves? Yeah. I bet this is not the last one, too. I'm uh, pretty sure. You can already see the racing and just the intensity ramping up with these passes and everybody pushing and shoving a little bit more as we get towards the end. And we have a long way to go. So everyone's just been on pit road. The two stoppers and the three stoppers have played their fuel strategy. So we don't expect much action there. We'll take a break. Caution out just the third time today. Caution out. Cleanup still underway here at Watkins Glen. Let's check in on the AT&T Fastest Driver Challenge. How the top four qualifiers for today's race are faring against each other. Brad Keselowski leading the race, so he's leading all of the packs. Remember to text FAST to 34763 to play AT&T's Fastest Driver Challenge or visit attfastestdriver.com. You could have a chance to win four Gs just by playing. Denny Hamlin is with Vince Welch back in the garage. Well, motor let go on the 11, but describe, uh, Denny, that scary situation that we saw there with you trying to get out of the race car and what was going on. Yeah, I got a thing with wrecks and fires here lately. It's uh, frustrating, but uh, our FedEx Freight uh, team had a rough weekend, you know, uh, getting caught up in the oil on Friday and getting caught in a wreck, and then uh, today just uh, the motor let go. But you know, really for us, uh, it's our first in engine uh, issue all year, so uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, it's part of racing. It's, it's what happens. It's just uh, just an overall bad weekend for us, and obviously uh, not, not the way we wanted to end it. What was it like in the cockpit there during that experience? I was fine until, uh, once again, I started feeling the, the heat, and I looked down, and I saw the fire right by my feet. Uh, it was coming through the firewall, so uh, that part of it's a little scary, but uh, once I started getting a little fire on me, I, I decided to stop at the nearest uh, fire station. Got out quick. Thanks. Glad you're okay. Alan? Hi, right, Vince. Thanks. So Denny Hamlin continuing the terrible run of luck he's had at Watkins Glen here in these last few years. 
Brad Keselowski leading. Tony Stewart has come back from a pit road mistake and a penalty earlier to be running second, Doc. And we're up here with Steve Addington. When you're a crew chief for a driver, you got to be a cheerleader, an engineer, and right now a weatherman. Steve, what are you thinking? I see you're looking at the weather radar here. Yeah, we're just looking at it and seeing what we what we got going on here weather-wise. I think this is helping us with the caution laps. And I'm, I'm not trying to be no engineer. I leave it to these guys right here, all that stuff. But done an awesome job. I mean, Tony's done a great job coming back from the penalty and getting us in this position. So uh, I'm really just proud of everybody on this Mobile One Office Depot card. It, Worked really hard all weekend, and uh, I don't know how much we got left, but he'll put it on them if he can get going here. How much more do you need to make it? Uh, are you close now making it to the checkered with a couple more yellows? I'm not saying I wouldn't gamble for them right here. All right. They were about four or five laps shy, and Alan Bestwick, every lap under yellow actually helps these guys. They don't want to see rain unless you're short on fuel. Then you don't mind a sprinkle every now and then. Well, either Tony Stewart or Steve Addington, has won five of the last 10 road course races as driver or crew chief. Put them together, it's a pretty potent combination. They finished second out at Sonoma in the year's other road course race. They're running second now. That shower you saw on the onboard camera lens has caught a part of this giant two and a half mile racetrack. We're hoping it passes through very quickly. We're still under yellow. Major League Baseball tonight and tomorrow on ESPN and ESPN2. Tonight on ESPN, a National League East showdown as the Braves, led by Chipper Jones, head into City Field to face David Wright and the Mets at 8. Then tomorrow night on ESPN2, the two best teams in the American League go head-to-head. -head. Josh Hamilton and the Rangers visit the Bronx to start a four-game set against Derek Cheater and the Yankees at 7. Sports Center to be seen in Dallas and New York. Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell and Monday Night Baseball presented by USAA. It pains you to read that two best in the American League and one of them not being the Red Sox, doesn't it? I think it pains me more that our director, who's uh, all the Yankees, Yankees fans fan, up here. was determined <laughs> to show all these Yankees shirts and hats. <laughs> <laughs> but as you know, we all take it in the right spirit. Yes. Under the caution still, you see some of the raindrops on the lens. They're reporting that we'll get one to go signal at the inner loop this time, Mike. Uh, before that actually happens, we're going to catch up with Brian Patty, crew chief for Clint Boyer. You find yourself third, but what's been going on with the brakes? <laughs> uh, you know, that's just uh, typical Boyer fashion. Get a little excited uh, mid-race. I just think got him over, overheated there. So we pulled some tape that last caution, and uh, since then he hasn't said anything. Do you have something for these guys if it, when it goes back green? Hey, I'm a, I'm a realist here. Um, if something happens, yeah, we'll go for the win. But, you know, right now we're, we're trying to... Uh, situate ourselves in the chase and, and being smart here and with a top 10 finish would, uh, would, would wreak benefits. The 15 team trying to sweep the road courses here in 2012, Vince. With Dave Rogers, the crew chief for Kyle Busch. First of all, on that, uh, that yellow that came out and you guys decided whether you were going to pit or not, explain what happened there. Well, timing's everything. You know, we had to get into our fuel window. We're trying to do this race on two pit stops. Really wanted to pit on lap 58 and the yellow came out uh, right on 58 and they closed pit road. Um, so Kyle did a, a good job of adapting, making sure he stayed on the racetrack so we didn't get a penalty. Coasted around, got a full fuel. Put us a little bit behind. If we would have pitted under green, we would have probably been in front of these, a couple of these guys are in front of us, but we're not, so we're just at the passing. Weather dependent now as uh, we're getting some sprinkles and so forth, but how good is the race car? I think the car is really good. It's hard to tell because we were saving fuel that last run. The two car was saving fuel, but I think the two and the, uh, and the 18 have been strong all weekend, so it should be a heck of a race here. Thanks, Dave. Doc? How about a little local knowledge? Matt Pusha, Greg Biffle's crew chief, grew up in Watertown, New York, about an hour away. Let's get a little information. Matt, uh, your knowledge locally on what happens with the weather this time of year and also how you guys doing on fuel? Uh, we're good on fuel. We're uh, probably two laps is good right now. It seems like the caution's worked out pretty good and fell, fell where we needed to. Uh, you know, the weather up here, you know, it's, it could be sunny one minute and we rain in the next minute. you got to be aware. And we're kind of keeping an eye on there's a lot of stuff that's popping up out there. So we're just going to run as hard as we can and see what happens. All right, headed going green, Alan. 22 to go, Doc. Ooh, Greg Biffle, the aggressive move to the inside of Marcos Ambrose. Kyle Busch forced wide.
Burroughs and Kyle Busch. Fourth place. As they run, continue to run over these curves, that little bit of moisture that we had there makes this curve and uh, rubber strips even slicker. So as they try to maneuver over this, we might see some guys get out of shape. Right in this section is where we saw most of the moisture when it did uh, briefly rain during that call. Looks like the track's good, though. Now those things are painted, too, so that makes it even worse yet. Ambrose with the move. Big dive to the inside. He's going to try and get two of them at that, once. That's incredible. He got two cars in one corner. I think Boyer has more of a problem than what they were talking about a minute ago because he didn't get down in that corner very hard at all. Ambrose the third. Key moment right there when he passed Kyle Busch. there with a great day still going. Jimmy Johnson trying to get around him that eighth spot. I'm impressed with Matt Kenza. He's in front of Sam Hornish. He's just having a, a really good day. I said what he needed to do today was just be basically invisible. Try to take advantage of maybe other people having problems. But man, he's part of it. Johnson, Sam Hornish, 48-22, racing there. Now Dale Jr. in the mix for that spot. Dale Jr. there in the 88 trying to make a move on Sam Hornish also had a solid day. Regan Smith, it's a little bit off course. Ryan Newman trying to take advantage. Yeah, it's hard to do that. They're so narrow through that particular section, you can't really get side by side. It's like Regan Smith would gather back up as they exit that interval. And that whole group on camera gives me a second to catch up on a few things. Smith spent a long time on pit road earlier in the race when they had to repair the front splitter on that car. Ryan Newman, remember, pitted just as we went green on a restart earlier. Oh, Tony Stewart goes for a spin. Into the inside wall at pit entry. Caution is out. Question is, did he get some help? Looks like he got a lot of damage, too. Yeah, inside of the, the inside guardrail there, right to the entry of pit road. contact before that that created that situation. Get the back over here, guys. Get the back damage, get the deck lid down. Bar been up. Yep, pull it out. Upper bar, upper bar. They got a lot of time. They can work on this car for a couple of minutes before the caution car gets back around. So Tony was second. Marcos Ambrose was third. Nope. He just lost it. Hmm. Still been some moisture down there, made it a little Absolutely. slicker than he anticipated. Absolutely, I think that probably had a lot to do with that. And how he spun and didn't catch after he bounced off the inside guardrail, the end of that pit wall too, that was pretty fortunate. Watch this, bang, and a car straightens up and he catches it without hitting anything else. Get a good look from Ambrose's car. Yeah, oh, he yeah, he's off, on that. yeah, with the left yeah. run almost over to the grass. He'd been pushing pretty hard, trying to close that gap on Keselowski. I saw him up through the interloop, really kind of throwing the car around. Looked like he was trying to make up ground. Show 
shows you how difficult this is that the very best at it can still make a mistake too. But I do believe that moisture probably had something to do with that. So Tony Stewart from second place to the inside guardrail and out of pit lane with some heavy back end damage on his car. And the caution is out for the fourth time in this race. Talk about a lot of restarts being interesting, but this may be one of the most with the three drivers that I see there in first, second, and third. Keselowski's got plenty of victories, but he doesn't have a road course victory in this yet. But the other two there with Ambrose and Kyle Busch, desperate need of a win. Yeah, they're going to do what it takes, whatever it takes, to try to get their car to, to victory lane. No as, well as, as well as the two car. I mean, he needs one, too, just to add to his point total when the break comes. Sorry about that, Andy. No takers among the leaders on pit road. Take a break. Get ready for the restart. Shocking turn of events as Tony Stewart crashes from second place. 18 to go here in Watkins Glen. Uh, the NASCAR Nationwide Series is back next week in Montreal, 2 Eastern. That is on ESPN and the Pure Michigan 400 next Sunday at noon Eastern on ESPN. Brad Keselowski currently out front. And we just said, I don't envy having him to start next to Marcus Ambrose. Doc? Let me show you here, Nicole. This is uh, this was the was the onboard camera with Tony Stewart no longer on board, by the way. This was the rear camera. And uh, I just talked to the technician here. This camera actually hit the wall flush and it was still working. Now, it won't work now because it will not pan back and forth, but this is the very middle of the back strip. And look here behind. When they came in, they had to cut the camera cord and unplug it, but it was actually still working in spite of the fact that Tony backed this car in the wall and uh, don't have that shot anymore. Nicole? Obviously has some damage, but Tony Stewart has been back in the pack before. Earlier in this race, he had to restart 25th. He worked his way back up to the front, and Rusty not having the back end of that car is not going to hurt him all that much. Well, I don't think it's going to hurt him at all. If the rear bumper's off the car, it lets the air get up under the car a lot easier. The key is, is if the sides of the quarter panels are nice and square, which they're probably not. Everybody knows well, that's a lot of downforce, but the rear bumper missing, that doesn't slow the car down. The problem he's got is he's got a long way to go in about 16 or 17 laps. He can get back up, I do believe, to the top 15, top 10. The guy I'm looking at, though, is in that nine car sitting on Brad Keselowski's bumper. I know Brad has to be nervous right now, but look at Clint Boyer. He's done a great job of putting that thing in fourth. Yeah, Keselowski yesterday said he's not taking any prisoners. He's going to do what it takes to win this championship. If it takes roughing somebody up, he's going to do it, he told us. Well, he better get he ready. He's collecting his nice guy points. He better weren't get they, ready. Weren't those two in the same position one season ago in yes, this exact were. same race? Hey, by the way, Ford has not won uh, a race in the last 14. Dave, Brad Keselowski is trying to keep it that way. And he had a restart yesterday late in the nationwide race that uh, Carl Edwards actually drove around the outside of him going down into turn number one. Talk to Paul Wolf about that this morning there on your left. Paul said, I don't think he'll get beat on the restart again. Talk to Brad right before he got in the car today. And Brad said, well, what you got to do is when you get down to turn one, you got to run that guy on the outside up into the curb. I didn't do that to Carl yesterday and that's where he stopped. He's left open the possibility that he could run his competitor way wide on that first corner. What do you think we're going to see here, guys? Well, it's going to be a drag race right down at the turn one. We know that Marcus Ambrose can break really late, and he's a great passer. I mean, you got to yeah. understand how to work the brakes, and he proved us earlier when he passed two cars going into one that he's got great brakes left in that car, so let's see what happens here. Yeah, I don't think he's worried about beating him to the corner talking about Ambrose. I think we're going to see what happens. Allen, have fun with this one. So just use our heads here. We got to do this a big picture here. We got a long way to go here, so save your tires. I'm like driving a Cadillac up here at the boss there with the boys here. Yeah, it's nice up there, ain't it? Very good. 16 laps to go. Three wide for the race lead. Turn one. Wow, what a move by Kyle Busch. Not done yet. Now it is. Warrior and Biff will have a little contact there. Stewart getting aggressive with that damaged car back in the back. Oh, it's got speed off. He is on the lead lap with that 95 car. Solid run for Scott today and that team. 
Truex making a big move on Dale Jr. to take a spot away. We're trying to. Here comes Jr. back. That's 11th place. So Kyle Busch with a bold three-wide move on a restart. With 16 laps to go, gets out in front after being squeezed a back a couple of spots earlier on the last restart by a bold move from Marcos Ambrose. And Dale Jr. and Mark Cruz still arguing over that spot. Jr. finally able to come back out front with that. Speaking of the Kyle Busch deal, I don't know that we've seen anybody be able to get up to speed quicker than what Kyle Busch does on the restarts, whether he's leading or back in the pack. I don't know what you do to defend against it either. What could Keselowski do there different to try to keep the lead? I mean, it's almost like he's, he was defenseless to that move. Talked about earlier, you get to the point in these races, these road course races for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series where it's not give and take. It's all take and no give. We're in that zone of the race now where it is all take. If we have any more restarts. Or if we don't, even if we to the end, we're going to see a lot of push and shove. Kyle Busch. Back to the front. He led the early segment of the race, got shuffled back by cautions and strategy. A bold move regains in the lead. It was a restart with 16 laps to go when Kyle Busch restarted third, ducked out of line, and made a bold move to pass both Brad Keselowski and Marcos Ambrose. Around turn one, get back on the track before turn two with the race lead. The Goodyear superior performer today, Kyle Busch. Led the early section of the race, had not yet pitted when a caution came out. Whoa. <laughs> and has fought his way back now to the front. And he's still driving it for everything that it's worth. That, that car couldn't possibly go faster or harder around here than what he's doing right now. Vince, what are they saying in the pits about him? You know, it's interesting. Just before that restart, Kyle said that the car was handling different aerodynamically than it had been earlier in the race. And crew chief Dave Rogers told him we hadn't changed anything on the car, so they thought it was track position. So they said, well, we'll see what we can do. And on that restart, he passed them both. He got the track position he needed. Hasn't indicated whether the car's handling better now, but it certainly looks good up front. And after falling back off these front two for a few laps, here comes Marcos Ambrose in the nine, back up to make it a three-way fight. Yeah, I can see Keselowski get loose right there on that left-hander. Oh, speaking of loose. Little see if he tries to outbreak him right here, though. Ambrose is great at this. Oh, little wheel hop. Tight squeeze. Now Bush is loving what he's seeing there. Oh, Ambrose oh. not able to take it. Kazowski slips a little. This is going to get out of hand quick. Down what was going to happen right there if he could make it through the corner. Clear behind him. And he does. There you go. So Ambrose to second. Kozlowski back to third with Greg Biffle taking opportunity of that side by side racing to close in. And Kyle Busch taking advantage of the side-by-side -side racing to get away. Yeah, we watched Ambrose there as we were at commercial drop back a little bit. I think he was actually saving tires and his brakes a little bit to make a run at them. How about it, Mike? I think you're absolutely right. Ambrose said before this race that he learned a lesson in Sonoma earlier this year on how to save tires and that he would apply it here this weekend. That may have been the case. I just spoke with one of the team members, asked what he's saying on the radio. They told me absolutely nothing. We know Marcos. At this stage of the race, he's in the zone. He won't say anything unless something's wrong. Yeah, well, he's in the zone for sure. Yeah. He lets you drive and do you talking right now. There's nothing to say. They're not making a pit stop. Only thing, you know, he saved all the fuel that he can. He's had some cautions to help him. Todd Paris giving him the car. 
His job to go catch that 18 if he can. But the time he and Brad Kozlowski spent in that hard fight for second allowed Kyle Busch to get away. Yeah, there's a lot of laps left. I know it says nine laps. You think that's not very many. It's a lot of racing here on this track. A lot of turns to negotiate. He's got a lot of time to make up. There are your first three. Mentioned Greg Biffle up into fourth place. Yeah, this is a solid run. I mean, Greg was very optimistic this morning, and I wasn't sure that it, in talking to him, that he could run in the top five, but he's been very solid there and trying to take this third spot. Biff and Dale Earnhardt Jr., as they run, tied for the championship lead as they run. Johnson with a solid day today. Matt Kenseth with a solid day today. And Denny Hamlin with that trouble now falling down into the 10th position, and that's not where you want to be. Now you see Boyer's falling back a little bit, and I think his brake problems are still there. He's still in sixth, which is a good solid day for this race team, solidly in the top 10 with the win this year. So uh, I think they're getting out of it. They would like to be up there battling, but I think that those brake problems aren't going to let him get up there for the win. There's Junior. Working on Regan Smith for a spot and trying to defend from Paul Menard. Got a couple of guys there having great runs. Regan Smith doing a fantastic job here today. Menard was inside the top 10 until Junior just passed him, put him back to 11. Junior is running 10th, Vince. And he indicated earlier that he felt like he needed a little bit more second gear and a little bit more third gear, that he said he just felt like he was lacking a little bit of power. But Steve Letarte has got to be pleased with where they're running because earlier today he said, we're about a 20th place car, and I'm not sure we've got enough power to go three stops and pass people, but they've been able to get there on two stops today, doing a nice job, the 88, Steve Letarte and his driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And last week's winner, Jeff Gordon, picking up a spot from Ryan Newman. That's 13th place. Gordon with difficulties earlier in the race. And he's trying to make up some ground, Doc. And ba basically putting that spring rubber in the rear really helped Jeff Gordon be able to get off the, cor off the corner. Maybe a little bit too little too late, but obviously much better than the first half of the race and trying to move in on possibly a top 10 finish right now, holding on the 14th position. Oh, Junior. Up in there, man. That's a turn five. That yeah, basically happened coming out of the inner loop where you're in the gas and turning back to the right. It cost the junior probably 12, 13 spots here. He was running 10th. We'll see where he falls in line now as he comes to the start finish line. Here's a look. It looks like he just came out of there a little too high, not much grip. There's a lane, lane and a half there is about all that you have. It looks like he might have just got, as he came out of that inner loop, just a little bit on the high side, and as you try to go to the power, he got out from under. 10th to 22nd for Dale Jr., just like that. Just looking at our points, and there's a long way to go to that, but that just that one incident right there where he was tied for first, now he's fourth in the points. I think it really is going to matter. It's really, they're going to get reshuffled. He's safely in with 114 points clear of 10 so, or 11. So he's got, all he really needs to do is try to win another race and try to get some more bonus points. Jimmy Johnson running fifth in the race. And going to look for a spot here on Greg Biffle. Or at least let him know he's there. Not a tremendous day for the 48 car, but a very solid day for sure. As Jeff Gordon picks up another spot. That's 11th place from Truex. Hey, Jeff's going in the right direction now. We saw him earlier in the race that he was getting passed by most of these cars. So the adjustments they made, as they as Doc reported, are beneficial for them and, and helping Jeff uh, at least go forward and make up a few spots here. Vince, 
No damage on the 88. They're just going to come in and uh, give him four tires, but the car was uh, kept clean. So good job for Dale Jr. to keep it clean, just tires and gone. It's got to be aggravating when you've had a decent day and it all goes away in the final six, seven laps. Yeah, it happens so many times on these road courses, you know, whether it's you, you make a mistake or you're shifting or your brakes go away or you get hit. It just seems like, man, you've had a solid day and then everything goes in, in one little mistake. There are your top three. Kyle Busch, Marcos Ambrose, and Brad Keselowski running third, Dave. Keselowski's crew chief told me this morning, our strength is the long run. I'm not sure anyone can beat us there. But listen to Brad right after he got passed by Marcus Ambrose. I just pushed so hard, I got nothing left. That's four of them guys behind you running 13 flats. Remember, you always go faster when you save gas. It's nice and smooth here. Pushed hard, nothing left, and that cannot overcome the aggressive moves made by the nine and the 18 earlier, Alan. Restart, Dave, with 16 laps to go. Was a huge moment in this race. Well, in Brad's defense, it's hard to be smooth and take it easy and try to make lap times when you got two of the very best road racers chewing on your rear bumper. So he had to go as hard as he could to try to hold them off, and he couldn't do it. Now he can just sit here and see if his car will come back to him. Change for fourth. Johnson on the move. We saw him early in the race. Kind of established himself up there in the top five. Never really showed that he had anything for these first three drivers uh, today, but uh, there he is in fourth. He and this team got so many people's attention, their rivals' attention with that dominating win at Indianapolis. And they are certainly in championship form. Numbers in their championship years this year compared to that five straight run, they're right on target. Menard slides wide. Jeff Gordon into the top ten. Not going to be happy with it, but a solid rally for the 24 team. Kyle Busch got the lead on the initial start. He was on the outside of the front row. Got ahead of Juan Pablo Montoya in turn one. Led the opening run of the race, but Joe Nemechek slow. Trying to make it back around to the pit lane. I'd say maybe he's got a had a transmission trouble problem or something like that. Trying to make it back. Yeah. Two laps to go. It's like his last car did come back to him. It's just maybe a little uh, too little too late. See there, if Ambrose happens to make a little bit of a mistake. Brad will be there to take advantage. Right there's a little bit of a mistake on the nine car. Well, it's a mistake. It's, it just looked like his handling's going away on him. Yeah. Bobbing and weaving around a lot. Just a lap and a half to go. Keslowski aggressively after Ambrose. Here he goes well, for second. Well, he's got position on him in the right place. He made a great move through the inner loop. He slid that thing through there and jumped back in the gas. He can see that Ambrose's car was really going away. I mean, that nine's bobbing around. You I see the 18 moving around, around yeah. like he might be out of fuel. That's exactly what I was thinking, Andy. I was wondering if he was running out of fuel here. Coming to the white flag. I'll tell you, the two cars close that gap. I don't know if he's bad or if he white thinks flag. he might have a flat a tire no or something like here. that. He's really moving the car around. It doesn't look very stable right now. One lap to go. Kyle Busch, defensive line into turn one. There's something wrong with the 18. Now Ambrose trying to get second from Keslowski while he tries to get the lead from Kyle. Oh, Contact in the S's. And Ryan got Dangerous spot on the track for Kyle to be sideways. Looks like he gets off to the guardrail. No caution yet. Here's the race for the lead. Keslowski's got damage on the left front. Is the tire going to make it all the way around? And will the nine help him? Oh, Everybody's in the glass. Oh, yeah, dig, dig, dig. That dig, might dig. have been the race right there. We'll no. see. No, Keselowski's slower. <laughs> the 
Kozlowski's got a problem. Trying to stay with Ambrose. Two final corners. Do they use the bumpers? A nudge, a push. Can Ambrose save it? To the checkered flag. Who gets here first? Clear, clear. Ambrose, nine. Kozlowski, two. Final corner. Marcus Ambrose is going to win at Watkins Glen in a remarkable last lap turn of events. Jeff Gordon in the wall. That's off the final corner. It's almost like it was out of fuel, but he's still running. Vince? I'm with Dave Rogers. He's the uh, crew chief for Kyle Busch communicating now to the team. Dave, what happened with Kyle's car? Well, the 47 broke. He seemed he just went by smoking. He broke. He let oil down all over the track. And uh, we just got caught in the oil and allowed two car to get to us. Then. Two car race this way, raced us. So, um, good car. Kyle did a great effort. Uh, really proud of everyone on this uh, m and Toyota Camry team. We're fast. They know we're here, but uh, we didn't get the job done today. So there was nothing wrong with the 18 car. He just got in the oil of the 47. No, uh, there's oil all over the racetrack, and it's just hard to go. Thanks, Dave. Alan. Well, that explains a lot right yeah, there. There's probably oil all the way around the track, and that's why we couldn't figure out exactly what was going on. So Marcos Ambrose with the first ever last lap pass for the win at Watkins Glen. Brad Kozlowski having to settle for second, but Dave, he's smiling a lot as he shares. Well, he's congratulating everybody on Marcus Ambrose team. Tell us what happened on that last lap, Brad. 18 was leaking fluid, something fierce. And uh, the track was just, had no grip at all. And when I caught him, he had uh, leaked really bad into one and missed the corner because he was slipping his own oil. And I got under him going into two and we all slipped in his oil and I hit him and it spun him. And, I mean, I hate to say there was nothing I could do, but there was literally nothing I could do. It was just one big giant oil slick underneath his car. And I feel bad about that. And then it just came down to, running a whole lap against Marcos and uh, I got an oil and would slip up and he'd get by me and then he'd get an oil and slip up and I'd get by him and just really good hard racing. So beating and banging, I think that's the way racing should be. Uh, it's great to race against guys like Marcus. Thanks, man. It's great to race against guys like Marcus that you can rub on, lean on, and they don't lose their cool and just intentionally wreck you. That's what racing's supposed to be right there. Uh, a good driver with a little bit of bumping and rubbing, but none of that intentional wrecking BS. Uh, Marcus is a class act. That's the way racing should be. How did you come back? You said yourself your car was gone. Yeah, you know, I just got back into taking care of it there and riding right Marcos, and it came right back, and then we are in good shape. One of the most exciting final laps at Washington's Lens we've seen. Brad comes home second. Unofficial finish order. Ambrose, Kislowski, Johnson, Boyer, Hornish Jr., Biffle, Kyle Busch, seventh. Marcos Ambrose celebrating back-to-back -back wins in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Watkins Glen International after a crazy, strange, bizarre twist in the last lap <laughs> where Ambrose went from third to first. An amazing, crazy last lap at Watkins Glen and Marcos Ambrose goes from third to first. We go to Victory Lane presented by Pennzoil.
The emotion not quite as intense as a year ago, but believe me, they are very happy here in victory lane. What a dramatic last lap. How would you describe it? Oh, man, it just feels so good to be back in victory lane. Thank you to Sprint, uh, Stanley, DeWalt, Mac Tools, Ford, Rich Petty Motorsports, everyone that gets us here, you know. Just feels so good. Last year was relief. This year is just pure joy. Big shout out to Dad. He's been in hospital all week. I wish he could be there for you, but I hope it makes you feel better. And uh, just pump my team, pump for Todd Parrott, and uh, just a great day. What about that last lap? How were you able to take advantage of the 18's misfortune and bring this car to victory lane again? Well, I was the first one to slip on the oil and I let Brad pass, and it was just getting worse and worse. And the car, you could tell the car was staying out there because, you know, the, the oil was moving around the racetrack. And, you just take your chances, you know, you got to commit at that point of the race and bad luck to Kyle. Great racing though with Kyle and Brad. I mean, they're the two best guys to race with, just awesome fun and uh, that's the way racing should be. And we got the number nine, Stanley Ford in victory lane. With three laps to go though, the two got by you. It, it seemed like it was slipping out of reach. What were your thoughts then? Yeah, I just burned everything up. You know, our strategy was to do three stops. All of a sudden, that caution come out, we had to pit and uh, we came out in ninth or tenth or something and uh, I just used the stuff up coming through and you just got to take Lady Luck when she strikes and it was our day. Congratulations. Thank you. Marcos Ambrose still stellar here in the Glen. He's never finished worse than third and now cashes in his second career Sprint Cup Series victory. What an amazing finish. Marcos Ambrose celebrating in victory lane. And yeah, that old saying, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, Kyle Busch had one in his sights. Circumstances and conditions saw it slip away in the last lap. And who can blame him for being frustrated? Back at Watkins Glen with more post-race coverage after the amazing finish of today's Finger Lakes 355. Jeff Gordon winning last week at Pocono. This week at Watkins Glen running 10th coming to the final corner of the race when he wound up in the guardrail. Trying to get more. Wow. Yeah, it looked like he just had a, a run there on the outside, maybe of Regan Smith. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt Kenseth. Not much grip out there, though, and another one of the best loses it, Doc. Absolutely, DJ. And uh, Jeff, you had driven it back to within a top 10, inside a top 10 finish, and then uh, it went around. What happened? Oil all over the racetrack. Um, you know, it's pretty ridiculous that you know they don't want to end a race under caution and put uh, you know that many cars in jeopardy I had no idea there was oil out there and I mean I knew there's all kinds of havoc happening all around but uh, you know it's a great effort by driving in hunger Chevrolet I'm, I'm pretty bummed out right now because uh, we didn't have the day that I thought we were gonna have you know I thought our car was a lot better than that and uh, we started pretty good but I knew something wasn't right and, and then we tried to make an adjustment didn't go the right way went backwards and uh, yet Alan and the guys made some adjustments there on that last stop and we weren't good on the restart but man did it come on and we were just passing cars left and right I was having a blast and you know to work that hard all day long come all the way from way back all the way up into the top 10 and have it taken away because they don't want to throw a caution you know it's pretty disappointing so you know, I jumped out there to the outside of Kenseth, and I think he could see the oil because <laughs> he just gave it to me, and I went out there, and there was just no grip, just completely came around. Thanks for your time, Jim. Thank you. Let's go to Vince Welch. He's the new points leader. Jimmy Johnson takes over the points lead by one with a third-place finish today. What kind of day did you have today? Was it as good as it seems at the end? Yeah, I mean, the first segment, we were pretty far off. Um, we came in on our first stop, made some adjustments, and really got the car back in, in uh, the condition I needed it in and, and ran kind of third all day. So real happy to finish where we did. Um, those last two laps were just out of control with the oil down. And you're studying the road, trying to see if you can see an oil trail. And it really wasn't a, a large visible one to, to dodge, but you could fill, fill the oil on your tires and slip it and sliding, and then guys are spinning all over. I mean, it was chaos, but uh, I'm, I'm glad we got back to the finish line, finished third, very solid day for this Lowe's team. And um, just can't thank everybody at Hendrick Motorsports enough for their, their hard work, uh, the commitment from Lowe's, and hopefully there's a lot of Lowe's employee owners happy right now. The five-time champ, he's back on top of the point standings. All right, Jimmy Johnson with that third place finish today as Marcos Ambrose continues to celebrate in victory lane and we continue to hear from more of the top five finishers. Here's Dave. And Clint Boyer rolls home fourth today. A win earlier this year in a row, of course, now a fourth. And talk about your last laps. 
Man, those last couple laps were wild. Uh, you, I went into one, and the car just took off skating, but I saw the car in front of me do the same thing. I was like, did we both blow tires, or is there something on the racetrack? And then we got over to two, and it went sideways again. Let me tell you, that was oil straight in the groove. Kind of reminded me of the old motocross days. Uh, you had to find traction on the outside and the inside because the groove certainly had none. Um, Hornish and I, we were slipping and sliding around. Uh, Biffle slid up, I got around him, and then the 48 slipped up on the last corner, almost got around him. But, um, you know, what a great day. Uh, solid weekend. This isn't one of my best race checks. I want to thank Ryan Patty, everybody in this 5 Hour Energy Toyota, for pulling through for me and giving me a good car. Other than the Sonoma win, most fun you've had on a road course? That was pretty nerve wracking, but it was a hell of a lot of fun. All right. Clint Boyer, fourth today at the Glen. Sam Hornish Jr. had some fun today as well. Brings it home fifth today. Two Pitsky cars in the top five. Sam, third yesterday in the nationwide race, fifth in this race today. We know you're trying to prove that you belong <laughs> in this job. What did you prove? What are you proving each week in this uh, cup car? I think the best thing that we can prove is that we just go out there and we finish these races and finish them on the late lap. And we had a, a problem at Daytona the first time I got the opportunity to get in the car and, and blew out a left rear tire and, and kept us from finishing where we thought we should. So we just kind of build on it every week. But our Shell Pennzoil Dodge was really good today over the long run. We just didn't get a long enough run there at the end. Real happy with what everybody at Penske Racing is doing from the engine shop to the chassis shop. Guys are giving us good cars to go out there. Brad's a great teammate to be able to go out follow so just having a lot of fun right now enjoying it and hope that we get to do it some more hornish fifth today doc well, it looked like dale earnhardt jr as a points leader you were going to have a top 10 finish uh, but then what happened over there with the spin i just got in the corner and made a mistake and that was pretty much all it was to it just overdriving the car after you spun was there other damage to the car it looked like you struggled a little bit getting the car to, to turn no, I had all my tires were flat spotted, and I got back out on the track, and then there was just oil everywhere from somebody, everywhere. You, it was, you couldn't see it, but it was everywhere. <laughs> so you didn't know where to run, and I was just, I saw the leaders were coming, and I was trying to get out of the way, and I was, they were in oil, I was in oil, and then I watched everything that happened in front of me, and just a bad deal, I think. Uh, the track with, you know, shouldn't have oil on it. We shouldn't be, I don't know, you know. Be, uh, you know, it's a tough deal, I guess. They let her finish out, you know, with all that oil on the track. I don't really like that, but because um, it, you know, it, it is a bad, ugly finish at the end. Dale Earnhardt Jr., 28. All right, Doc, and uh, before we talk about what lies ahead, let's go back again and look at the crazy turn of events at the finish of this race. After Kyle Busch slid wide off turn seven and in turn one gave up the lead to Keselowski. It was taken from him by Ambrose. And then they raced the final two corners. You can see right here, Brad Keselowski thinks he might have it there, but he's in that all again. All was just all over this racetrack, slipping and sliding. When I thought Kyle Busch maybe had a tire going down or something, he was just in all and couldn't get any traction. But as we're looking at that, from a camera shot, you can't see the oil. Yeah, even Jimmy Johnson said he could not see it. He was looking for it as hard as he could to look, and he couldn't see it. And so these drivers were just basically just dealing with what they had. And these two drivers right here that went to the checker flag just did an incredible job. And so did Kyle Busch. He just was a victory. So circumstances, excitement, <laughs> and a crazy finish at Watkins Glen with Marcos Ambrose celebrating his second straight win in this event. And next week, it's on to the 200-mile-an-hour high-speed Michigan International Speedway, the short track at Bristol, high speed at Atlanta, and Richmond to settle out who makes the chase. It'll be hard to beat this one, but there's a lot of good ones coming up. I'll tell you, this is about the craziest finish I've ever seen in any race. That's why I love road course racing so much. Yeah, just all kinds of things happening there. Unfortunate for Kyle Busch, had done a great job to get himself in position for that, but got some really, really good tracks for good racing coming up. Really excited about these next four. So championship standings, Jimmy Johnson goes to the top of the board, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. slides down to the number four position. Denny Hamlin, more critically, falls to that 10th spot, now just 40 points ahead of 11th place in the wild card picture ryan newman now moves ahead and has that second spot a second win for kyle that might have been would have really helped him there didn't happen that's why he was so frustrated he really needed that win and jeff gordon he slips out of that spot yeah we know kyle bush has some really good tracks coming up i know he 
wanted that second victory there, but he's got Bristol where he has dominated before and Richmond uh, runs well in Atlanta and at Michigan. So uh, should be some great racing, but unfortunate for him. Great day for Marcus Ambrose. Wild, unforeseen circumstances in the last lap at Watkins Glen. Sees Kyle Busch take the, the white flag first, but finish in seventh unofficially. Marcos Ambrose take the white flag third and take the checkered flag first. NASCAR Nationwide Series in Montreal on their road course next Saturday at 2 Eastern on ESPN. The Pure Michigan 400 next Sunday at noon Eastern on ESPN. And Sports Center is coming up next. For the 30th time, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series went racing on the historic road course in Watkins Glen. Strategy was played, there were some fenders bent. Several teams had mechanical troubles and crash troubles that put them in the garage. In the end, it came down to circumstances. An oily racetrack with the leader Kyle Busch losing that top spot on the last lap. Brad Keselowski and Marcus Ambrose going at it for the win. And the Australian Ambrose back-to-back -back wins at Watkins Glen.